Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome back to our beginner OpenGL ES and GL kit video tutorial series. In this part of the series and the next few, we're finally going to take together everything we've learned in this series so far to create a simple 3D game that's a breakout clone. In this first part, we're going to create a scene graph. Here's what the app will look like when you finish this part of the series. Notice that we're still on a mushroom. No, this is not a game about a mushroom. Basically, we're refactoring the code here to get the code in a good state so that we're ready to make the game. Currently, our game is set up so the view controller creates a variable for every model that it wants to draw. So right now, we have a variable for the mushroom inside the view controller, and it calls render on that, and it calls update on that. Similarly, if we want to draw a mushroom and, say, a sword, we'd have to have a variable for mushroom and a mushroom on a, and a variable for a sword and call render and update on both. So this is a little messy and impractical because when you're working with a game, you're going to have a ton of models on the screen at once. So you want to have an easy way of working with multiple models at a time. So what we really want is we want to transition that class we've been working with called RWT model and rename it to RWT node. And the difference is now we're going to add the concept of nodes can contain other nodes as children. So we can organize our entire scene into like a graph where there's a top level scene object and the scene object contains an array of children, which is all the things you might want to draw. So it could be an array that one contains the mushroom and one contains the sword. Or in our breakout game, the array would contain all the bricks and so on. Similarly, we want the transforms of a parent node to affect the transform of the children node. For example, if you had a model for a car and it had children for the wheels, two different models for the wheels, if you move the car, you would want those wheels to move with it. So here's what our game will look like. We're going to have a model class for every model in our game. So we're going to have one for the brick, one for the paddle, one for the ball. They're all going to derive from RWT node, which is the renamed version of model, except it also has children associated with it. Then we're going to have a special node called the scene. And the scene won't have any geometry to draw. It won't have any vertices or indices. Instead, it will just have children to draw. And it'll have all the bricks, the paddle, and the ball in this game. And the advantage of doing it this way is then we can change the position of the scene in order to get it to show up the way we want on the screen and have all of our children nodes be affected with it. So here's what I mean by that. So you know that our model, now renamed to RWT node class, has position, scale, and rotation. So you can modify the transform. Well, now it's also going to have children. So you know the model matrix is the transform of this node with inside its parent's coordinate space. Well, the model view matrix is the model matrix times its parent model view matrix. And this kind of chains up all the way to the very root where you start with identity and then you start going down from there. So this allows us to position the scene to maybe rotate a little bit so we get a 3D perspective on all of the models inside. All right, we have our project here where we left it off last time, our rotating mushroom. And our job is to refactor this a little bit better so we're prepared to make the game. So the first thing is, if you notice, our project is getting a little bit messy here. And we're working with a game. We're going to want it a lot more organized than this. What I'm going to do is open up our project folder here. And you'll notice that all of the files are just willy-nilly put inside here. In fact, some of them are still in this demo resources folder, which doesn't make sense anymore. So what I want to do is I'm going to open up this folder and create a couple different subfolders that we'll be using. First is we want one for sort of the main files. Next, we want one for the model files. We want one for the nodes, which is our models. We'll be renaming that to nodes in a bit. And then we have shaders. OK, so inside main, we want the app delegate and the view controller. So let's select those two, drag them up into main. And inside model, right now, we just have two really, the cube files and the mushroom files. So let's create a cube folder and a mushroom folder here. And what I want to do is I'll drag these mushroom files into there. And the cube, we don't really have a, a cube file, but we do have these two textures we've been using for the cube, so I'll drag those into there. Okay, so what else? So next we have the nodes. We have RWT cube, model, and mushroom. We'll move those all into nodes. And here's our shaders. We'll move all this stuff into shaders, and we'll get rid of that demo resources folder. So now things are a little more organized. Now going back to our project, uh, I have to actually stop this and then open it 
up again. Nothing's found anymore because we've moved stuff all over the place. So let's go ahead and delete pretty much everything from here. And then let's just add it back in with its new locations. Okay, so I'm gonna go to product clean to make sure we got a clean build, run it again, and everything works as before, but our folders are a little cleaned up. Now you might wonder why did I organize the files from Finder and then set them up in Xcode rather than just creating the groups here in Xcode. Well, it's because if you create groups in Xcode by default, they don't correspond to your file system. So they might be all pretty in your groups, but all messed up in your directory structure. I like them clean in both ways. So by doing it here in Finder and then dragging them in, it's set up these groups so that they're linked to the appropriate folder. So this group is linked to the main folder and anything I add to this group will now go inside that main folder and so on. So it's just a little bit of a cleaner method. Okay, so now that our directory structure is a little bit cleaner, let's go ahead and start refactoring our model class to be a node instead. So I'm gonna select RWT model here and go to uh, refactor this. Right click, refactor, rename, and I'm gonna call this instead of RWT model, I'm gonna call it RWT node. And this is a cool feature of Xcode. It will, when you, rather than having to search through and replace, it will allow you to rename it here and it will also rename everything that uses it and the rena related files. Uh, and you can preview all the changes, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click save and I don't need uh, snapshots or anything, so turn that off. And now it's called RWT node instead. And so the big difference here is we wanna add a new property that stores the children, and it's gonna be NS mutable array. Switching over to RWT node.m, first thing I need to do is initialize this array. Then I'm gonna switch down to render with parent model view matrix. And right now we just get the model view matrix, and then we render ourselves. But if we have children, we want to render our children first. So we loop through our children here, which are gonna be also RWT nodes. And we call render with parent model view matrix. Now, in, this is how it chains, right? So our model view matrix is our parent's model view matrix by our model matrix. The child's model view matrix, parent model view matrix will be this as well. So we just pass that in and that's how it all chains together. Similarly, we have this update with delta method and right now it doesn't actually do anything special. But what we're gonna do is call update on all of our children. Okay, so now we have a node class set up. So back to our original issue. The issue is this view controller has to have a uh, different class for everything it wants to render and the view controller really shouldn't be concerned with how the scene is set up anyway. We should have a class that is the scene itself. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a special node class that is for the scene itself. So let's create a new file, Objective-C class, we'll call it RWT test scene, and it's gonna derive from RWT node. There's just gonna be an initializer here. Switching over to the implementation file, import, RWT mushroom because that's the, basically we're trying to get the exact same setup we have right now, but just a little bit cleaner. So we'll make a RWT mushroom variable here. And let's make our initializer. Notice for the vertices, we're gonna pass in nil and the vertex count zero because we don't have any geometry. We're just containing children here. We initialize our mushroom the standard way. And we're gonna position the scene a little bit. Oh, we have to add it as a child, of course. So self.children, add object, that's the important part, mushroom. And we don't have to write any code like we did earlier in the view controller to render that mushroom or call update because since it's in this children's array, and we already added the code to do that in RWT node, we're all good to go. So now switching to RWT view controller.h, we just wanna replace the usage of RWT mushroom with RWT test scene. And here's one more change. Instead of having all this view matrix stuff set up here, we're gonna let the scene be in control of that. So we're just gonna set this to be okay matrix for identity. So there we go, run this. And we have our mushroom just as before. 
except now we're in a really good state to work on our game because we have a test scene right here that just contains a mushroom. But you can imagine that we could have a game scene that created a whole lot of other nodes as children adds into the array and everything will just work. So stay tuned for the next part where we'll finally start putting together the game. All right, that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we'd like to leave you off with a challenge. This is kind of a special case though. The challenge is actually your final challenge and it's combined with the next three. So just keep on watching. Hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.